today we are going to be making a beautiful alcohol ink sunflower piece. Ah! And I'm using an old farmhouse window for this. It looks like this. <laughs> so obviously you can see through it. But if you want, you can do this on a tile, a porcelain glazed tile. Any non-porous surface works really well. If you wanna try it on paper, you can also do that as well. Um, I'm going to be walking you through the different steps of how I layered everything and you guys can follow along, try it on your own. I also will have the inks, the ink palette that I used available for purchase in my um, online shop. So you guys can grab that and I'll ship it out to you. You can get started and make your own beautiful piece. Come on, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start with this. I'll do this picture in picture thing and narrate our way through this lovely tutorial. So you're going to need your work surface that you're, you're choosing to work on. Um, this work surface that I'm working on, it's pretty large. It's about 28 inches wide by 27, 26 inches tall. Um, but you're gonna need to get your inks that you're going to be using. So I am using a butterscotch, a sunshine yellow, a dandelion, a sepia, a teak wood, lettuce, and metal. Those are my my colors that I'm using. But with this project, what you're gonna do is, we're gonna make five sunflowers. If you wanna make three, that's fine. I just suggest going with a odd number. It's a lot easier to lay out. So what I'm going to show you now on the screen is just kind of like the rough area where I'm going to be laying everything out. So I want one up here, one right there, one over to the side, and kind of like make a flowing, um, kind of like they're floating in space, um, but we're gonna kind of anchor it all down with some greenery too. So I'm gonna start in this upper left-hand corner um, and I'm going to be creating the center focal points of the sunflower, so the big brown middle portions of them. Um, and I'm gonna start with this teak wood color. I'm gonna lay down a nice big blob. This is about, well, I guess, silver dollar size portion. And then I'm gonna take my compressed air and do a real like gentle, like swirling around motion just to kind of move the ink around and you don't want to go too crazy with it you can see there I have um, some of the ice coming out of it that's why you get that little crackly look I think it's kind of cool looking um, but it doesn't have to be like that we can change this as we go too so I'm gonna make my center portions of the flowers all over so I'm gonna do the same thing with this one there's a lot more ice um, in that. This is a pretty full um, canister of compressed air that I was working with. So, and with the compressed air too, I mean, it's like, you know, trigger discipline. <laughs> you gotta like kind of get your sweet spot of where your, um, how much you pull. It's not too much or not, you know, not enough. You want just the right amount to get the air moving everything around. So now I have two nice looking guys. This is all gonna change. <laughs> eventually but this now oblong shape this is kind of like the side like a side profile of a sunflower so you want to make it look kind of realistic and the way to do that is to kind of play with shape so instead of just having big round circles all over the place we're gonna break it up and do we're gonna do three round middle portions but then we're gonna do two of kind of the side view and play around with perspective that way and this you know I'm not going around with a rounding uh, around the bend kind of motion here. I'm just kind of spreading it out. And then we'll end with a really big piece right over in this lower right corner. And just playing with that air. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going around really nicely. And like I said, this one was full of ice. As much as I tried not to shake it and do it with the way I was working, there was a lot of ice coming out. So I've got my five center focal points. And now I'm gonna go and build out the petals on each of these. And I'm going to kind of work one flower at a time and make them really pop out and look really nice. And you're gonna to wanna to be patient with this. You're not gonna to wanna to just go whole like craziness and start putting yellows down because it'll all run into one another. And I'll show you, I do it, oops. So for your first petal, you wanna make sure you're not too close to that center portion and you'll see I'm way too close. See how it's leading into the brown? Um, it's really not that big of a deal, we can fix it, but 
to prevent that from happening, make sure you leave a little space between your brown and your yellow. So kind of leave a little extra space between the two colors. And then you're gonna take your compressed air and just kind of blow out the ink um, from the center out to the edge. And you're gonna get this kind of like petal shape that starts to form. And it's not gonna always form that nice petal shape every single time. It's always, it's very unpredictable. Just don't worry about it. Kind of give yourself a little um, grace with this. But I'm leaving a little space in between all of these petals so I can really start to let the edges of where the ink is kind of dry and firm up so that when we lay more colors down on top, we still have like remnants of the shape left over. And I'm, I misspoke, I'm actually using a butterscotch here. Butterscotch has a really nice warm orange base to it. It's beautiful. And you can see where we are spraying um, from the center outward. The amount of ink we have near the center is less than the outer edges. So you have this nice gradation of this really bright center more to this really beautiful buttery yellow outer edge of the flower. So just kind of take your time, go one petal at a time. It takes, it takes a, little, a little time and you get better with each, with, with each floral piece that you do and you, you always learn. I am still learning um, with the stuff that I do. So just still going around with that same butterscotch yellow color and creating these beautiful petals. So I'm just going around with all these beautiful petals starting back at the top where we started. So everything should be um, pretty dry. So we shouldn't have too much crazy overlapping going on. And now I'm switching to the, sun, the sunshine yellow color here. So I'm gonna use the sunshine yellow and kind of bring in a little bit more brightness because um, the butterscotch is very warm, not that the sunshine yellow isn't, but these two colors play really, really nice with one another. So we're gonna build out more petals going around um, the flower. And as I go, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did last time just blowing it out and you will see that the colors start to overlap, they start to intermix, and you get these really fun textural things that start to happen with where, wherever the ink's kind of like dry and land. You have, there's a lot of character that's being built when you're doing this. So, and depending on how you're using your air, what line you're laying down, like your lines might be a little thicker or thinner or shorter than mine, um, so your flowers might look a little different and that's totally okay. You want to be you. <laughs> so don't try to copy this exactly because then it's not totally yours. You wanna make this yours. So, but we're just going on and laying through with the um, petals. And I'm gonna come back in and just kind of dab more of that teakwood color for that center um, just to make it a little darker and deeper. So, and I'm just dabbing. These are like individual little dots like I'm almost stifling with the bottle that I'm using and then I'm using this compressed air to kind of blow back the the center to keep it from leaking too much <laughs> into my petal work that I have so and I'm going in with the the spray there it's funny like watching it all right that's, that's a good looking flower good job me okay so <laughs> we have this I'm gonna bring in this is where I bring in a little bit more brightness there. That's still the sunshine yellow that I'm using, but I'm just trying to break up some of that just to give it a little bit more depth and make it look kind of like sun dappled almost. These are great colors. I don't know, anybody that does this piece, you're gonna, you're gonna be happy while you're doing it because how can you not with all these beautiful flowers? Some flowers are just happy. The colors are happy. It's sunshine, it's summer, it's great. All right. So now this is the one in the upper um, right corner that we're gonna be kind of playing with perspective here because we're getting more of a side angle view of the sunflower. So the top petals on the top of the, um, from the center are gonna be longer than the ones that are on the bottom here. And I'm using that butterscotch again to create these. And again, I'm going petal by petal for this. So that's what you're gonna be doing too. Let me go here and see my, those petals are pretty long. So I'm not going real short with these. I'm kind of making them 
trying to build the actual shape of the, the flower. So I want a longer petal and then we can go in and layer um, the shorter petals over the top of it. Now if your two flowers petals intersect and start to mix together, don't sweat that too much because we can still go back and fix that. But I'm just walking around her, inking around this beautiful little flower here, going petal by petal. Just trying to make sure that where I'm putting the ink down, that the ink is kind of dried um, before I do it, just so that it, I don't get too much wet overlap. And two, I'm, cha I'm actually changing my position of where I am in relation to my um, canvas slash glass. Um, so I did walk around to get a better angle for um, where the air is being sprayed. So if you have a, like, um, like a Lazy Susan or a turntable that, if you're, that you have your piece on that you can rotate it, you should do that. But definitely kind of get up and get up out of your chair and walk around your piece. I usually work standing up. Um, so that's a way that I can get around and get in on where I need to be at the angle I need to be. So I'm just going around and it looks like I'm just having fun with some of that ink and adding a little bit more bright sunshine color in the center of that one. So what you really wanna do, because you have that really, really dark center on these flowers and you wanna have that real golden like ring around that um, dark center. And the best way to do that is by using a really bright yellow color and then having like the softer orangey yellows kind of cushioning around it. So again, I'm going in with this other flower. I This flower that I'm working on right now um, has the sunshine yellow and the dandelion as the two yellows that I'm working on right now with this because I want this to kind of be bright so your eye is kind of forced to travel around the canvas. So it's not just stuck or not one place feels super heavy versus the other place. Now I'm just kind of painting in a little bit of like warmth in that center there. And I'm just spreading it out, getting those, those petals kind of layered. And really when you're doing this, just relax and have fun with it. That's, that's the best part of creating is getting into that flow state where an hour goes by and it feels like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> Which is good and bad, especially don't don't be baking anything or cooking anything while you're doing this. I've burnt many cookies <laughs> trying to create and uh, bake at the same time. And again, I'm walking around it, getting a better angle of where I'm shooting the air to get the petals to move. And always take a step back from your piece and kind of take a look at it, see how things are going, because certain things will pop up and you're like, oh, I want to add a little detail here, a detail here, and um, it's just good to kind of take a step away. Okay, now I'm working on this other kind of forced perspective floral, but that butterscotch um, that I'm working with right now, that is seriously just probably my favorite yellow, just because it has that really nice shot of warmth in it. It almost looks like fire. So again, I'm just building the petals individually out on this one. And those top, that top arc of petals you want obviously longer than the bottom. Because the bottom are they're kind of coming towards you, but you have that, that forced angle. So you have to give the illusion that there's a little bit more to them than, than just two dimensions. And there you go, I'm overlapping with the same butterscotch. So this is just a butterscotch flower right now. And I'm moving my ink around. Very methodical, petal by petal. All right, now the center one that I'm working on, I'm using the butterscotch for that. And I'm going to build this out more in an arc, but we have that upper left hand flower that's kind of overlapping. So really I'm gonna start and go in a clockwise direction around that center um, flower. And I'm, I am gonna have it overlap that one um, piece in the upper right hand corner. So I'll just go and just very steadily make my way around this flower. And that is actually a sunshine, yep, that's sunshine yellow that I'm using on that one. 
And you can see how the petals, I mean, it just starts to form. And you can do this technique, it doesn't have to be sunflowers. This would actually be really good for like a coneflower or a daisy, black-eyed Susans, obviously. These could be black-eyed Susans. Um, but you can just change up your colors too. So if you wanted to do like a pink petal or a purpley petal with the brown center, um, definitely this would be a really beautiful way to go about doing that, which actually I might try. But here we go. We're getting, we're just building out these petals. Yeah, that's so pretty. And if you notice, like none of my, the petals are, they're not the same. They're not, you know, perfect. All of them are a little different. I'm just enjoying creating the shape and really just layering on that ink. And really when you have a layer of ink that's already dried and then you go back over it, um, you do get a lot of um, really awesome like texture that starts to develop just by the way you have shaped and blown that ink with the little air compress can. And the fun thing with glass too, like I'm painting on the back side of the glass. So when this piece is displayed, it's actually gonna be displayed where you see the, the underside of this is going to be the, the viewing spot. So if you were painting on a ceramic tile, obviously what you see is what you would get, but painting on glass is kind of fun because then you can get those two different things. So if, it, if you turn it around and you like the other side better than the side that you were working on, you know, obviously you can display it that way. So it's kind of a little versatile as far as that's concerned. Okay, now I'm going in. So I started with the petals on that one being that sunshine yellow, and now I'm going in with the butterscotch to give it a little bit more depth. We are just making sure that these little flowers are just having a good old time. And, it, and manipulating the inks with air. So, and it will take a little time to get used to doing this, but once you get the hang of it, it's easy, it's fun, and it's really neat just to see where everything kind of ends up. So you can see that butterscotch color we have that nice warm outer edge and then that really bright golden cent center in the middle of these flowers that so really makes that center portion stand out now I'm going in and kind of incorporating that really dark teak wood color I put a couple drops on the teak wood directly and I'm blowing out from the center of that to kind of give the illusion of the darker um, like almost shadow of where that um, little hump of the center of that flower is. So it kind of blurs that edge a little bit so it's not so um, stark. So I know in the beginning I said to give yourself a little space around that center portion, but now where I'm going, because it's that center portion is nice and dry and it's only gonna pull a little bit of that deep, dark brown color out of it, um, that's when you do it, is when you're kind of towards the end of building out your, your um, petals and florals and stuff. And I do like that, that deep warm brown color. It just kind of pulls in with those oranges and yellows and it plays really nice with those colors. This is a good, good color combination. Really nice bright, bright and earthy palette. So we're just repeating. Over and over, it gets very zen-like. So you get your, your center portion, build out your petals, Build on another layer of petals, and another layer, and another layer, and another layer. You pretty much do it until you say, okay, I'm done with the layers of petals. But then, like I said, you wanna bring in that warmth of that center um, and get a little bit of that yellow or orange on that center color and like blow it out from the center so you have that deep, awesome depth there. And now the center flower is kind of more of a focal point because it is now overlapping that one that's in the upper left-hand corner there. It's kind of fun how that kind of all plays out and works. And then what I like to do too, if you, if you need to get things to kind of um, dry up a little bit faster, if you just take your compressed air and gently go over your piece. It'll dry everything a little bit faster so there's not so much waiting. But when you do that, the can starts to get cold. <laughs> 
<laughs> in your hand um, and they can actually get frost on the outside. So usually when I'm working, I have like three to four different compressed air cans um, because on a big piece like this, I'll actually rotate all four of those because they'll get really icy and then it hurts <laughs> to hold it. So um, just switching it out to a fresh can um, that's not icy will do the trick. All right, now this one I'm going in and I'm, guess what I'm doing? I'm just taking that center dark color and I'm incorporating it with that sunshine yellow color and just pulling it out right here. I must have been like, I don't wanna mess with this anymore. <laughs> this is the fun part of the process too because guess what? There's really no right or wrong way to make your art as long as you're having fun with it. And, and you know, enjoying the process, that's all that, that really matters. Okay, I need to get my head out of the way here. The highlights look good. Nice. Oh, my head's in the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we have that fl flower, so you can see where you have that dark center, and then this is just the sunshine yellow that's all around it. And I'm just incorporating that deep, dark tone and pulling that center darkness out towards the edge. And that looks pretty badass. I like it, it's good. Oh, I see. So that center flower, I remember, I remember what I was thinking when I was doing this. That center flower I thought was a little too orange and I wanted it to brighten it up a little bit. So this is where I'm taking that dandelion, which is that really, really bright yellow. And I'm putting a drop in and I'm spraying it outward to really make that center portion glow um, with that brightness that I was, I thought it was missing. It was just too dark for me. So I'm just going around with that beautiful dandelion color and building some really bright yellow petals. You can see how it's already kind of starting to glow and warm. Petals, petals, layers, layers, lots of wood, lots of petal layers. There we go. More, more petals. Some flowers have lots of petals. You guys are gonna have to like post yours on Instagram. Tag me at Timberland Studio so I can see what you guys are making too. It's fun to see what everybody comes up with, like all the different types of creatives that are out there, and their spin that they put on the, these projects. Okay, so now for the center portions of these, I'm just gonna drop in some more of that um, teak wood color, um, and I'm gonna do it in just kind of like a circular pattern to get almost like the seeds of the sunflower. And we're hinting at the seeds of a sunflower. And this too, I never just do this and like call it a day. I'll go back in and do it over and over and over again until I'm happy with it. Because at first, I always forget when I do this. I'll usually go in with a pretty heavy hand and then my um, little tiny blobs that I want to be small little seeds turn into these big blobs, as you can see. But it's kind of cool because we've got this nice um, uneven edge that, that we're working with. So that's kind of cool. I'm definitely gonna wanna fix those up. Oh, and this is where I go in with some sepia. This is the sepia color. And I am putting a few more dots. And this one, I guess it needed to be sprayed a little bit. Looks good. All right, time for the green. Let's bring this thing down from the sun and incorporate some earth into it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take this lettuce color and as you can see, I just kind of like drew some gestural lines and I'm taking that same compressed air and just spraying it. And we're creating the illusion of leaves here. And as we go, again, you see where it like goes out to the edge and then it kind of starts to come back in on itself. You want that the ink to do that and you want it to kind of dry. Too, so you get that nice outer edge of where the ink is to kind of create its own like little coffer dam, I guess. Again, some more gestural lines and I'm taking this like a compressed air coming in from un like the bottom part 
I'm not going straight over the top of this. I'm kind I'm coming in at an angle with the air. So it's about like, I would say probably like a 33 degree angle to the glass. So it's pretty, it's a pretty like small angle, but it just kind of spreads everything over the, the plane of the glass that way. And now this, this brighter green that I'm using, it's called botanical. It's a very beautiful, no, I'm sorry, this is meadow, meadow green. It's a very beautiful color. And it works really nice with this, the really subdued green tone of the lettuce color. Um, it just gives it a little bit of brightness and a little bit of cheer and breaks up because the lettuce has a yellow undertone to it. Um, and the yellow, it, it can, it, you know, if, if we were to leave the lettuce and the sunflowers just the way they are, it won't look bad, but I do like to bring that, that more true green in there where there's a little bit more blue in that undertone because the teak wood that we're using that even has a little bit of a blue under blue green undertone to it. So those colors all kind of play together really nicely. And then you'll have this really beautiful, bright, gorgeous, sunny, summery piece. If it doesn't make you smile, man, I gotta find something that will then. And the same thing with these leaves. Doing the same thing with the leaves that I did with the petals except they're just bigger and they're less, there's less um, like structure for these. They're just kind of free flowing every, everywhere they wanna go. I try to keep them kind of flowing in the same direction to kind of give the illusion of upward growth so that they're not all kind of squibbly squabbly all over the place. Um, and I do like to stick a little bit of the green on the upper part of the piece and towards the edge of the piece just to kind of balance everything. So there's three spots where I'm adding green to these five flowers here. And that just kind of anchors everything, makes it look really, really nice, fills in some of that negative space in between the flowers with a little bit of color. And even after I'm done with the leaves, I'll still go back in and kind of play around with the leaves on the sunflowers as well. And a good rule of thumb too, when you're doing this, especially when you're when you're with creating your petals, is if you you walk away, you look at it, and you're happy with it, and you're afraid to add more to it, that's when you need to stop. <laughs> but if you're not afraid to add more to it, keep going. Because I found usually when I'm like, oh, this looks really good, I don't want to add anything to it because I'll ruin it. That's a good indicator that it's reached the aesthetic point that you are can like happy with. So you should stop and leave it there. Although I know for a lot of artists, we're never fully happy with anything. <laughs> we're always looking at the flaws. Um, I find though with inks, it's easy to overlook flaws because everything's very free form. Um, and a lot of, and just a lot of it is, it's kind of abstract, so it's all right. It's playing with colors. Okay, so now I'm going in and I'm gonna create the center pieces of the sunflowers with um, a cotton swab loaded with alcohol ink, or yeah, just rubbing alcohol. And I'm gonna go in and do like stipling in the center of these. And I'm gonna start in the middle of each center of each flower and kind of rotate from the center, rotating outward to the very outer edge, kind of mimicking sunflower seeds. So if you can picture like what a sunflower looks like, they all have those rows of seeds that just kind of rotate outward. Fibonacci, golden ratio stuff. And you might find too, um, on your piece, areas where the alcohol ink is very thick and dried. If you're using a cotton swab, the cotton swab cotton might get caught on that because it gets stick the ink gets sticky after a while. If it does, take a little bit of the cotton off of it and just really make sure you have it loaded with um, rubbing alcohol and then it won't stick as much. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a bunch of stipling all over the ding ding place.
you just completed the beautiful, bright, sunny sunflower piece that you can display in your home, give it as a gift to your mom. I mean, opportunities are endless for spreading joy and <laughs> love with art. <laughs> Um, so just a few little like cleanup things here. If you have overspray anywhere on your piece, um, say there's an area that, I mean, this is only if you're working on a non-porous surface, so glass, metal, or um, tile. If you have overspray, say you got a little overzealous with that can of compressed air, you can go in with a cotton swab or a piece of paper towel um, with alcohol on it and actually correct little areas that may look a little messy but sometimes I think those overspray areas just add a little bit more character to the piece so if that's your case you could totally leave that um, another finishing thing that you can do is buy chain if you're if you're making a window you can buy chain from your local hardware store and some eye hooks screw the eye hooks into the wood frame of the window add the chain to it and boom you got a piece that's easily hung outside or over an eave um, wherever you decide to do that but again, with the finishing, I suggest that you protect your work always. Even if you're displaying it indoors because um, alcohol inks, if, the, if they're exposed to UV light too much, they can fade, so you'll lose the vibrancy. So I suggest either this or this for um, sealing it all up. And I'll post the link with a little bit more description as to what those two products are and you can seal your product. Um, the only suggestion I have for that when you're doing that is you take a very light hand when you're spraying because anything from an aerosol can will make your inks run and you want to avoid that from happening. So when you spray, do a real light coat at first, wait a good two to five minutes in between applications and just keep spraying it until you get a good, like I would say at least three coats of the UV protectant on your piece. So that's it for me today. Check out my other two pieces. I made two of the um, sunflower piece, so you can see the variations on a theme. But um, join me next week. I will be doing another alcohol ink project on another window, but it will be exploring more like the roses, roses and rosettes and stuff like that. So you can learn how to make those as well. Um, subscribe to my channel, please. Give me a follow. Thanks for coming along on my creative journey, and we'll see you soon.